as we watch with careful attention, we go more deeply into the person we are. And again, avoiding picking and choosing. Avoiding justifying. I have to eat trail mix, the, di the food here is so terrible. Oh, I'm a terrible person for eating trail mix. A real Zen student would just eat what's offered and be totally content. Mm. Maybe. But much more interesting, what's happening? What's going on? How's the world being put into place in that moment? A kind of inquiry. You know? Not watching so it can judge or conclude or fix but just um, learn more about this great mystery of me. Arousing, way-seeking mind. And then as we arouse way-seeking mind, we can start to look at well, what helps that? And what hinders that? As we start to notice the ways in which the attraction and aversion, and then when we can't decide whether we want it or don't want it, then we can just be confused and anxious. No? It's always a good option. When we start to attend to it, and we start to see each of them has its own characteristic kind of struggle or contraction. And we can explore right in the middle of struggling and struggling and contracting. What is it to just be? What is this hunger, this thirst? What is this resistance, this pushing away, this disapproval? Instead of being swept up in it, and we start to uh, notice it, experience it. Can we start to see how it sets the stage for some emotional and mental activity? With what mind, with what emotion, do you line up in the food line? Was it the same disposition that was there at breakfast? Or is it entirely different? Beyond good and bad. Beyond that's the right way and that's the wrong way. What is it? How is it? This is the uh, inquiring mind of practice. This is the door that opens when we're not just engrossed in what I want and what I don't want. So 
so that when those um, unfinished agendas, those things in your life that you desire, that you resent, that you worry about, that you want the gratification of remembering, Noticing, acknowledging. And then as we start to get more close, feeling, experiencing. And also noticing those moments you're standing in the food line and it actually doesn't matter to you if you ever get to the front of the line. Those moments when you walk outside and you have nowhere to go. And the sky has no limit. And the rising sun of dawn casting those golden beams across the field. are beyond words. But maybe the paradox of our practice is that we don't go chasing such experiences. We don't pin a gold star on them and give, you know, an F for failure on those moments of contraction. It's not about picking and choosing. This comes along, okay. This comes along, okay. How is it to sit upright in the middle of that way of being? What kind of effort is that way of being? What role does paying attention to the breath have in that way of being? What is it to allow whatever and however with the inhale? What is it to release with the exhale? What is the combination of directing attention, body, breath, posture, and receptive attention, whatever occurs, experience it. So the disposition, the, the intention, it refines the effort, it guides the effort. It helps it not to just be the continuing expression of what we want and what we don't want. And our effort becomes play of this coin. The great way is simple. Just do the impossible. Avoid picking and choosing. Jiaozhou says, as soon as that there is an idea, it's another it's another expression of picking and choosing. When it's there as an idea, when it arises as an engagement, 
it instructs, it supports, it guides. But I would also add, especially as we're setting it, even the construct helps us. But can it invite us into connection? If you arrive at the top of the food line and think, I want that and I don't want that. I'm choosing this and I'm avoiding that. Hmm. Can you notice? Some wondrous way your life is expressing itself right there. Maybe there's a great mythology. This will bring me happiness, contentment, satisfaction. That would bring me uh, pain, dissatisfaction. I'd be forever hungry if I ate that cabbage. Hmm. What about that? Can it be like we're opening and opening and connecting and connecting? Can we watch how extraordinarily variable consciousness is? One moment you're engrossed in something. And then somehow there's noticing, there's space, the light is seen, the crows are heard, and the blue ocean of the carpet is visible. And the, and then the, the skillfulness of whatever technique we're engaged in starts to be more available. In terms of your posture, its uprightness, its openness. No? Sustaining that, but not forcing it. Don't let it become some kind of strain. And on the other hand, don't park your body in a slump. So you can think. That delicate balance. Can you notice the way the mind can contract around the subject and let it soften with the breath? Not forcing something to stop happening or demanding something start happening, but just opening to what is.
is a poem called From Here to There. But I'm going to turn it backwards and call it From There to Here. Everything needs readiness. Baskets emptied, gladius spear placed in a glass. Before you begin, before you let yourself move from there to here, attend to little things. A cat's mouth opening, a thin parade of ants along the sill. Something in the way we are made once order. Once three pillows lined across the head of the bed. Once the porch swept and the shaded raised. This is the the Zen fixation with doing things a certain way. We're just kind of humoring ourselves with regards to uh, how when the world around us has an order it helps stimulate an inner order. We attend to it purposefully, attentively, and it echoes back. It attends to us. It helps us uh, find that inner alignment. So the details of posture, um, the details of walking kingdom, entering the zendo, bowing to your seat, the sensitive relationship to the world around us and the world within us. As Naomi says, something in us response to that. Something in the way we're made once order. Once three pillows lined across the head of the bed. Once the Zabutans in a nice neat row. Before we begin, before we head into those secret rooms no one else has ever cleaned for years where memories rest in heaps without cabinets and have only to be lightly touched to shine. Lightly touched. In Pali, in the the usage of the word Asa, contact in in Buddhist practice. It's it's like the touch that can feel the texture. You're not pressing. You know, you press on the floor. You actually don't feel as much as when you touch it lightly. That kind of touching or experience. as you touch the mind that lines up for food. As you touch the mind that arises when the bell rings to end a period of zazen. As you touch the mind that despite the fact the afternoon is rather pleasant in its temperature, its lack of wind, its available scene, and there's a storm inside. Hmm. Can 
you feel the way the wind is blowing in that storm. Some persistent negative emotion. Some determined storyline. Maybe some heaviness or bitterness. Hmm. Touch it lightly. It's interesting, an interesting paradox. It becomes more intimate, we me, and we start to not take it personally. Hmm. Look at this arising. Look at this storm passing through. We touch it, and we, and we feel the familiarity of that emotional disposition. And we don't take it so personally, and it's something about the human condition. But when we touch it lightly and it starts to shine, um, it invites compassion. Hmm. How long will I keep grasping and repeating that pain? When will it be time to open the door and go back out into possibility? So the coin starts with an almost naive notion. Why don't you just be perfect? Because, you know, if you were perfect, there wouldn't be any problems. Okay, then. Thanks for that. <laughs> That's a big help. I'll get right on it. No. But then, um, we start to see the delicate alchemy of aspiration. We, we, we start to f feel what it is to not be beaten back and forth by what we want it to be and what we don't want it to be. It's some possibility starts to emerge. And it's not what we demanded it be or what it, we demanded it not be. It's what emerges from n noticing, acknowledging, contact, experiencing. Naomi's poem. Everything needs readiness. The basket's emptied, the gladiolas placed in the glass. Before you begin, let yourself move from there to here. Attend to little things, cat's mouth opening, 
a thin parade of ants along a sill. Something in the way were made once order. Once three pillows lined across the head of the bed. Once the porch swept and the shades raised. Before we begin, before we head into those secret rooms no one else has cleaned for years, where memories rest in heaps without cabinets, and have only to be touched lightly to shine. Thank you.